I've now got authorization to put my statement back up again. The statement I gave at my disciplinary hearing with the British Orthodontic Society. And just to recap, this was um, for comments that I made on videos on YouTube and multiple different videos that I made, I've posted on YouTube, all but one are still up there that apparently the British Orthodox Society was claiming that this content did not represent a position that was considered to be in the best interests of patients and contain views that cannot be substantiated and are misleading. So they said that either I should take the videos down or I should give written representations to support my views with acceptable evidence, whatever this means, um, or they would expel me from society. <clears throat> and of course, they'd rep reported me to the General Dental Council. And of course, the worry is that, you know, there's no smoke without fire as far as the General Dental Council goes. So uh, being expelled from the British Orthodontic Society could look bad when I um, go to the General Dental Council who have the power to take my license and livelihood away. Um, so we'll follow with the uh, statement and then fairly soon we'll follow with the verdict of well, what they actually came back to me with. And I just listen, want to say a big thank you to all the messages I've had. It's been, um, it, it is quite uplifting. I, I, I work hard and I, it's, it's hard. It really is hard work to do this. I know I've got a passion to do it and I desperately want the truth. I want to get my father the represent, the recognition he deserves before he dies. I mean, it's what sons are supposed to do. Um, but thank you for your support. If you can do sign the petition, because this is how we get change. You know, you coming together, you ask how you can help. Please to sign the petition. We'll have a link below. And here's a statement. Thank you very much. Statement of the British Orthodox Society. Very sorry to drag you here in these circumstances. Please understand the difficulty of standing here effectively alone in front of you all and your lawyer. Today I risk my career for my scientific beliefs and the defence of my freedom of speech. Due to your actions in seeking my expulsion from the BOS and reporting me to the GDC, this exchange is necessarily adversarial and formal, which gives me little room for pleasantries or a more constructive approach. In science, it can be a great advantage to be proven wrong, from which you can learn so much. In law, it is ill-advised to be proven wrong, which can frequently cost you dearly. It is my hope that this event can have a constructive conclusion, but you will have to excuse the formal tone. Since 2009, I have made many attempts to gain your attention, but persistence and some luck has finally succeeded. And achieving such a meeting such as this in quite an unorthodox manner. I believe that you have a fundal misunderstanding of how those in the orthotropics movement are thinking and approaching malocclusion. It seems to be due to structural problems in the system. It would be interesting, for example, to understand what happened to the concept that you need to be proven wrong rather than have to prove yourself correct, especially given the current evidence base within orthodontics. In relation to the allegations, all the allegations, but specifically allegations one, two, three, four, seven, eight, 
9 and 11 would require a discussion on the etiology of malocclusion and quite possibly one on the pathology as well prior to any meaningful investigation or cross-examination. There is a significant misquote in allegation 3 relating to the suggestion that I related malocclusion with intelligence, which would materially change the question raised, and I hope you may look at this again. I feel that allegation 5, where I discuss my father's case and my work level and income, does not require a defence. It is clearly my opinion, which I am fully entitled to, and to express publicly. There are no incorrect statements made. Allegation 8 refers to statements on a different website. I cannot be held responsible for the comments of others. There is nothing wrong in mentioning they exist or that someone should look at the site for any reason. Allegation 10 relates to the concept of baby-led weaning. I am not going to make a full defence to this, as it is very likely I will have to make this again at the GDC. And I am duly suspicious that comments I make now may be used against me at the GDC. However, the reference list that I will be using will include these papers. Quoting, no difference in self-reported frequency of choking between infants introduced to solid foods using baby-led weaning or traditional spoon-fed approach by Brown, A.J., in Human Nutrition Diet, 2017, December 5, and a baby-led approach to eating solids and risk of choking, Fangupol. L.J. et al. Pediatrics, 2016, October, edition 1384. Both are very clear in their assessment that early weaning directly onto solid food posed no greater risk of choking. It is important that they to note that is your responsibility to demonstrate that I am wrong, which given these looks very unlikely. As a matter of goodwill, and to demonstrate that we are actively attempting to compromise, we have removed this video. Defending allegation 11 and 12 would require the disclosure of confidential information. If this is deemed necessary, I will deal with this situation at the GDC, the General Dental Council. However, I do not feel that an internal disciplinary hearing in a scientific club extends this far. Also, the individual in Allegation 11 has suggested that he would like to act as a witness to the allegation himself. An allegation 12 would require a debate on the etiology first. For the record, I would like to state that, in my opinion, these allegations are an attempt to silence me and prevent me from providing beneficial information to the general public, including your beneficiaries, as well as diverting attention from your need to engage in a full and meaningful debate on the cause of the problems that your members are treating and to discredit me. You have already referred me to the GDC, so I must raise the question that why are you going to this effort and expense when there is already a perfectly capable and effective system in place already? A system which in time, a system which will in time execute an identical procedure. Also, from your letter of 
20th of July. It appears that this event is purely to satisfy legal protocol. You have already found me guilty. As I have you present and in attendance, I would like this opportunity to formally challenge this society to a debate on the etiology of malocclusion. The reasons that I give for you accepting this is, it is an essential part of my defence. You are a scientific organisation and as such must follow the scientific process. It is what your beneficiaries would want and would have wanted in 2009 when I first raised this with the committee at the time. There is a very realistic possibility that simple public health measures could significantly reduce or even prevent malocclusion and the other symptoms from the same condition. If you do not understand the cause, how can you provide effective therapy? I also have the following concerns. That a downswing in facial form, as explained under the concept of craniofacial dystrophy, has, can be predicted, sorry, can be precipitated by some forms of orthodontic therapy as practiced by your members on some patients in some situations, and that this can be a factor in the etiology of OSA, obstructive sleep apnea. There is a considerable body of medical opinion supporting this. Patients under treatment by your members are not receiving fully informed consent, especially those who are diagnosed at a young age who are told they will need to wait and have surgery at a later date. Permanent retention may, over time, compromise periodontal support. Given the nature of my concerns and risk management in healthcare, it would seem prudent that you take my concerns seriously and engage with me on a level playing field. I should not have to provide any evidence. As a registered specialist and member of your organisation, suspended or not, it is my ethical duty to raise my concerns and yours to hear me out in full. Incidentally, there is good circumstantial evidence to support this. It does seem strange that over the last 40 years, the tropic premise has never undergone a formal critical appraisal, despite it being a foundation of the MRC, my race, DNA, the Bass appliance, Harry Orton's system, the ADAPT LGR, and the ramper, and having aroused so much controversy, not even at my father's trial, even though he was struck off, if only to prove him wrong. And yet now, in allegation 12, you have stated that this type of care recommended by Dr. Mew is not based on evidence. In all fairness, formal and critical appraisal is needed. It is important to review all the current evidence available before suggesting more research. To suggest otherwise would be unethical. And for the record, I wish to state that orthotropics is a terrible system, only, in my opinion, better than the alternatives. It is my ethical duty as a registrant to bring my concerns to your attention. It is not my ethical duty to undertake clinical research to prove methods or techniques to your satisfaction. The beneficiaries of the BOS, as well as yourselves, myself, pay our taxes for a system specifically set up to undertake such research, and we have duly gathered 
quality records for this purpose. However, as stated, it is important to have a free, fair and full exploration period to review the existing literature prior to planning any research and this should start with the etiology and work up. Before you vote on this matter, do any of you feel that you could give a good account of the etiology, epidemiology, pathology or cure of malocclusion? I pause at this point. No response. As I worry that at some point in the future, anyone unable to defend their position on these points who votes to expel me from your organisation will not be viewed in good light. Finally, can we discuss the possibility of some form of engagement on the etiology and other areas of orthodontics? I make a request for an open discussion on any core subject within orthodontics. Also, could you personally support the campaign for the prevention of crooked teeth and recommend that your members and other healthcare professionals do likewise? At this point, I distributed the leaflets for the Prevent Crooked Teeth campaign to all the people present at the meeting and stated that if we're teaching kids to brush their teeth, we should also teach them the importance of breathing through their nose, sitting up straight at dinner, eating with the mouth closed, and I'm promoting discussion. That was my statement to the British Orthodontic Society Committee on the 26th of September 2018.